And so Netflix has come out with a show, Man to Man, which I really don't know anything about. Apparently it has subtitles. So of course I have not watched it <laughs> uh, because I don't watch subtitles. Sorry. I don't believe in looking down, up, down, up. That's just not me. I, I, not, not me. It ain't me. But it is Brendan, and so that gives us the opportunity to watch some stuff that is actually probably pretty darn good that I'm just too ignorant to watch. So, Brendan, take it away. Give us your man-to-man Netflix review. All right. That's correct, Brian. There are subtitles here, which means that I'm doing the review of this Netflix yes, that original is what show. That means. So, man-to-man, or as they show it often, man-x-man. Man-x-man. In uh, man some times of- man yeah, I, they they call it man's man. It's and usually when I see man X man in these Asian shows, it means man like cross or it, it, the X means cross, so like against or with or whatever. But whatever, they're calling it man's man in the English man. To man. Anyway, so this is a Korean drama show about an international secret agent. Ooh, this is actually no, and this guy is actually pretty. Is this cool. Korean James Bond. See, it, it is. That's what you. I don't know. You can't think. see me. I'm smiling really big when I say that, though. Korean James Bond. I, I think yeah. that's that's yeah. the basic idea, but they don't try to emphasize it um, too much. Okay. Like they do okay. make it distinct enough. Um, but so the show is about an international secret agent. It starts out um, the story of how he becomes an agent really quick, and actually they they do a good job of condensing it. Uh, and it's something you don't see about James Bond, but he starts as an army sniper. Uh, you did in Casino Royale, but we'll keep going. Okay, well, but that was like after decades. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, true. True. so he starts as an army uh, sniper who disobeys orders in order to save a little girl's life uh, from a killer who's kidnapped a bus full of of school children, uh, and is about to is like threatening to kill someone her. Um, while there's a big standoff and everyone's ordered, stay back, hold your position, don't shoot. But so he shows off in, that he's a badass and says, you know, screw it. He runs down, does a bunch of acrobatics, jumps up on a uh, on a ladder, like uh, a building ladder, and really quickly sets up his shot and does his sniping from like while hanging from a ladder and takes out the guy and everyone's saved. So he feels good, but he's, you know, taken into custody because he disobeyed orders, direct orders. Um, But as a result, he gets to show off his skills a little more, like his ability to defeat lie detectors and convince people of various things. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, lie detectors are totally fake. They can really just tell that you're breathing, but keep going. Either way, he fools his way through. It it uses some clever lines, uh, like obvious lies. Uh, so he's not trying to hide that he's lying, but he is making clear that he's beating the lie detector test with very obvious lies. Um, but as a result, someone notices and says, "Yeah, this guy's got some skills. Let's let's recruit him for something." So he's recruited as a South Korean ghost agent, and they explain that there are uh, white agents, uh, black agents, and ghost agents. Racism. No. White, white are those that are out in the public eye. Black are those that are not seen by the public, but work. Um, and ghost agents are those that not even... Don't exist. They are not supposed to exist. They're the top level guys. And they... Uh, not even the government will acknowledge to other government agencies that they exist. And agents don't know who the other agents are. They're kind of a... Uh, a group headed, like they get special missions directly from the secretary of uh, defense or state or whoever it is in, um, in Korea. I forget w- which exact position they get it. I think it's the, uh, the secretary of defense that they get um, their missions from and they're super secret, super skilled, and they're international. They can go all over the place. They can work in Korea. They can work abroad uh, and they do all kinds of cool stuff. And most of them are badasses, as you would expect. Yeah, they're ghost agents, so. Yeah. All right, so that is that is a pretty cool plot. I got to admit, I am a little intrigued. My meter of almost wanting to watch the subtitle show is just a little bit at 25%. Yeah. And, of course, you so, can't so, trust anyone, and that's a key point that they tell uh, them early on. They're ghost agents. Yes, and and when he's recruited, oh. the, the guy that recruits You think you can trust him, people as a ghost agent, you're stupid. Yeah. Well, when he's recruited, though, they it is a good point. It is a good theme for the show of the, he's told, my first, your, my first and last advice to you 
is don't trust anyone, not even me. And so, the guy goes, I don't so even do trust, you trust that them. advice. Do you exactly? Well, I guess you have to to trust that advice, but yeah. <laughs> just don't. All trust right. So it. so again, I, my 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 meter is peaked. It's it's moving up. But okay. How, how's it how's it run down? But okay. So let's talk about uh plot i would say the plot is i broke it up in five characters but plot is is good it's a good plot it's okay. it's well formulated it has some good yeah. twists and turns throughout the way like you'd expect from a spy agent show uh even a little bit better than than i would expect they have some good tensions that they you know little cliffhangers you know something's going on but you're not sure quite what how it's going to play out and they they utilize it well um they keep it reasonably believable while still very exciting. Like obviously it's fictionalized. Not everything is the most believable thing, but they keep it in, in good bounds. Uh, they don't go over the top. So, so you're like, Oh, how could this work out? They do try to keep things um, within reason. They pace it. Well, they do have multiple plots going on at the same time. And they establish that pretty early on that you see different plot lines initially that you don't know how they relate to each other with different groups of people. Um, but they, as the show goes on and those plot lines progress and they start converging with each other and you start seeing things that you, you also didn't, that you thought maybe were just minor backstory bits or mm -hmm. minor other conflicts turn out to be more important. And they're, they're good with, uh, tying those and converging them nicely. And there are little details accounted for well paced, I would say with the exception of some of the, the love story that they put in, which is a ghost agent. He can't have a love story. See, and, and that is one of the things that I think does draw is a little bit of a drawback and they do try to set it up as if it's avoidable, but it's, um, but that's why I say, like, I think that they, they miss the pacing a little bit with how they play that part of the plot out. Um, but it's not too bad. Okay. It's just not as good as the way that everything else does. Some things are a little bit rushed a little bit or, or awkward, uh, with how that plays out, I would say, but it is kind of a central thing. Um, and I can understand having seen other Korean TV shows. That's, it, it's something that they would do even with a spy story. Okay. All right. Um, acting, acting, I thought was very good. Uh, they're, they're, if, as far as I can tell, like not uh, not knowing what they're saying exactly, but you could but you could sense yeah, their emotions from the their way. from their voices, from their their facial expressions. Um, this is a show with a lot of action. They they play off the action well. There is a lot of kind of uh, of nonverbal communication in this because obviously the guy's a spy. He has to mm -hmm. be able to get things Super across. Communicate. Yeah. Sometimes subtly, sometimes in other ways. So I think that they do uh, good with that. Um, and even a bit better than normal uh, with the normal Korean acting because a lot of like Japanese and Korean act acting and shows do things differently than we do in the U.S. that we might think is a little bit cheesy. But I think that they they pulled it off better here, at least for my audience, for myself, for my uh, interest. Um mm -hmm. One of the drawbacks they have is the English delivery. So there, while this is a Korean show with subtitles, there's actually a fair amount of English in this and some other yeah. random languages because he's an international spy. Meters going spy. up a little bit more. Meters going up a little bit yeah. more. But sometimes, actually a lot of the time, the English is a little bit weird. <laughs> but, yeah. and, and for us that understand that English is our first language, it's going to be more awkward for us. But this was originally designed for a Korean audience. And in fact, even though we say this is a Netflix show, it did air in Korea on They broadcast. just licensed to air it exclusively. Yeah. Well, there. I think that they were involved in the production to a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but it does make you realize it's a show a little bit when they're not acting like he's speaking awkward, when they're speaking awkward English or when these people that are supposed to be native English speakers are speaking awkward English. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of that. But I, I count that in, in acting, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I still think that the acting was very good um, other than that. It doesn't detract too much. Uh, directing, pretty good. I would say the directing probably the the weakest point, but it's not bad. Um, things are generally play out um, and go very good. Um, but I'd say there are a few bad choices that they make for how and when to present things um, and to get certain aspects of the characters across. And I don't mm. attribute this to acting. I attribute this to the director saying, okay, do things this way. Like there are points where this badass character who does establish himself very well as that, 
seems to break away from that persona a few times in order to like mm. celebrate a comp- some kind of accomplishment in a way that I can tell is he was told this is how you show that this is a good thing, but it, it does break from the uh, the secret this hyper professional secret agent um, character that he's put into. Um, and you see little things like that, that they chose to do these little bits of things and like it's delivered fine, but it detracts. And I think directing could have been better for um, making those choices of when to put those kind of little subtleties in uh, and keeping the image up properly. Um, action. It's good. It's good. They they pull some punches for Korean TV. This is not going to be like... Uh, it's not like it's not super gory violent, but it's, yeah, this it's th- this is probably not going to be the, on the level of say Daredevil. It's not going to be on the level of say um, uh, Marco Polo with it, the kinds yeah, of action they can do. But yeah, they do a lot of variety of different kinds of action, and they do okay. it very well. They do they, they have car stunts, they have explosions, they have guns, they have hand to hand combat, and it's all done. It's all done very well. Uh, some of the the most impressive stuff is actually the car stunts, um, which are pretty focal in in certain parts where he has to save people to gain their their trust by doing these things in in cars that are delivered very well, uh, especially okay, for cool. a TV show. Um, and finally, production, which is kind of a hard thing to define, but just how overall you know the quality of of everything. And I will say this is the best point that it was excellent. Um, they clearly had some money for this show, for this TV show. Um, and they used are, it well. Yes, there there are great sets. It is a contemporary thing, but uh, they have great sets. They do go to some nice foreign locations. They go to some like rich mansions, and they make these elaborate mansions, like these ru- of Russian underlords and things like that. And it looks really nice. Um, and the ver- variety of sets that they have is very nice. Very, you believe these things and they, they look great. Um, good editing going in there. Um, music is pretty good. I would say there is some weak points for me, but I could see, I, I know people that would like some of the points that I find weak, but they, they essentially have, I, I do music find it a little bit, taste, but... It, but it's also a little bit repetitive, mm. which goes with the theme. They have say like five or six different songs that play pretty much once each show for different, parts of it like this is the this is the song for the action stuff this is the song for the okay. undercover stuff this is the song for the love story stuff and i think the love story song it's like a korean pop song kind of it yeah, okay. i don't like it as much it also comes in kind of cheesy at ver- various points but it's okay Sorry. it's okay. okay and you get used to it um it would be nice if they had put more variety into it rather than just using the same five every episode that you know is going yeah. to show up every episode <laughs> but they're, yeah. they're not badly done so gotcha okay but so overall give us an overall give it what's your overall brendan um How many chewbacca chainsaws is this one getting i'm gonna give this one a four out of five wow, I, okay. I really liked it uh i i watched it all the way through and there's a lot of things that, that i don't it did hook me in and I, I i kept wanting to to watch it it had a few drawbacks i would say but overall it was great it was a good time it gives you action it has a little okay. comedy in there that there's a love story for for those that want it, and it's not a bad love story. I even though I think it's one of the weaker points, um, and it, it all ties in in pretty well. And it's something different. It's spy stuff done well, and it's also something that you could watch with at least older family. Yeah, like you, you're not gonna watch it with not your kids, kids, but, but uh, yeah, okay. But it's also not like a like. Marco Polo, like which you might not want to watch friendly. with your entire family. No, no, definitely wouldn't want. But it's like a PG thirteen family friendly. Yeah, thing. it is. I think it's like TV fourteen. Is what it is. Okay. Like that. So, so. All right. So uh, maybe Brian will check out an episode. Maybe he won't. I maybe. don't know. But gave it four and a, four total Chewbacca chainsaws out of five, which is actually puts it up there in the pantheon of some of the highest rated things we've ever done on this show. So yeah, we'll yeah, and I really good. liked it. I, I recommend it to anyone. I I took a star off because I it's reasons i said but um it is very good i'd watch it again if you don't have stars brendan i had you bought the chainsaws fine i whatever <laughs> i'd watch it again if i if i really um if someone wanted to watch it with if you know if someone was like oh i'll watch it but only if you're I'll be like all right sure it's, it's a fun show i could watch it again so. awesome well hit us up let us know what you think have you watched man to man or man x man or man times man or man against man or 
whatever whatever it's called by netflix uh hit us up let us know what's your rating comments down below of course hours from my face on twitter google Plus and facebook oh is good ways of getting a hold of us but let's